My name is Megan and I'm the product manager for Volkswagen of America, specifically for the Golf R, the GTI, and the Arteon. I should say first and foremost that I'm a Volkswagen enthusiast for life above anything else. I own two cars. I own two Volkswagens, obviously. One is a 2004 R32 in deep blue pearl. That is safe in my garage at home because in Virginia, they really like to salt the roads if there's any threat of snow whatsoever. So the R32 is tucked away safely. I also have a 2002 Cabrio GLX. It's also a manual. She is tucked away in a garage as well. Old cars and salt don't really mix and those cars are really special to me. So they're not my dailies. Um, my daily is actually this 2019 GTI Rabbit Edition behind me in cornflower blue. So the reason I've got these three cars here is because it just kind of represents what I'm responsible for work-wise. Golf R is another one in Arteon. Obviously I can't have a Mark 8 GTI or Mark 8 Golf R here yet because well they're not out yet. So unfortunately I don't have those here but I do have what I feel is one of the best GTIs of the seventh generation which is the Rabbit Edition cornflower blue. Uh, manual transmission it's one of 1000 and then I've got a Sorrento's Turquoise VW Spectrum Golf R. This particular color is one of six in the United States, and it was kind of like one of our official Volkswagen of America VW Spectrum cars. Hanging out in the back is a new 2021 Arteon. This is the facelift Arteon. This is the fully loaded one, so it's got the 20-inch wheels, got the new Harman Kardon system, um, two-liter engine, four motions, pretty sweet ride. I think one of the coolest things for me about the job right now is how close we are to launching the eighth generation GTI and Golf R. And the reason that means so much to me is because when I initially started on the product team, that is when we were just beginning kind of the seminal stages of planning that car for the US market. So for me, it's like the realization of a dream almost, we're almost there to say that I was there from the very early planning stages of what the eighth generation could and, and should, in my opinion, look like um, in the United States and almost to the point where here at the kind of the back end of 2021, we're finally gonna have those cars here and just to see them on the road to like, to get to that point, I'm so excited about that. I think that's that's the coolest thing for me right now about, about the job is to like realize this project from its start to its birth, essentially, um, in this country. And just the passion that I have for GTI and golf, hundreds of thousands of people in the US have as well, and we share that passion. It feels like a really special responsibility that I have. I think that's my favorite part of the job, is to act in the best interests as much as I can um, within the sphere of my own influence for Volkswagen of America, for a car that I love so much, for, for models that I love so much too. I think another really cool thing that I feel fortunate to do is put together business cases, for lack of a better term, for things that we want for this market, right? Biggest examples of that is manual transmission, especially for Golf R. We fought so, so hard <laughs> to keep manual transmission for Golf R for eighth generation. I very personally put together I don't know how many PowerPoint decks, I don't know how many presentations, how many business cases to keep that transmission here in this country together with um, some other senior members of management in my department and in the company. So there are so many people inside this building who are enthusiasts, who know enthusiasts, who drive these cars and like we do everything we can to keep that stuff or to get that stuff. And that's like what I want everybody to know. Um, it's, it's not like there's somebody in, in this building or wherever else who's like, we hate manual transmissions or, or we, we don't want cool cars or to say that I hope that I've had some really positive influence in keeping the manual transmission for Golf R and GTI or you know one other thing that I was really passionate about was working as hard as I could to get the eighth generation to have as much of the European stuff on it as, um, as we could, you know? And I think by virtue of the car being built in Wolfsburg now, so all golfs in the world are being built out of Wolfsburg, that gives us a little bit more leverage as far as getting all the parts in the parts bin, wheels or seats or features on the inside of the car, whatever. The only thing that really limits us is US regulations with things like headlights and taillights, as we all know. And I know that uh, DAP loves to sell some cool taillight kits, so yeah. As somebody who is a huge proponent of hashtag save the manuals and a manual driver myself, but also somebody who appreciates the technology and innovation of DSG. It just makes perfect sense for this market and for our customers and our enthusiasts to have their choice. That's when these cars perform their best, is when we give the customers 
as many choices as we can, especially when it comes to transmission. Well, I can't give like total specifics right now. I just want to like reassure you all that America gets the cool stuff too. <laughs> the improvements they've made to the chassis. So obviously it's still MQB platform. It's just evolution of MQB. It's called MQB 37. There's a lot more aluminum componentry in the subframe. So they've managed to shave off like six pounds front end and rear end so just to see like what the engineers have done to optimize the way this already awesome platform can handle packaging wise as far as dimensions one thing people say and i have to just emphasize it the car looks different in, in person than it does in pictures you really can see how that became this and how they they favor each other right and i'll tell you and i said this about the gti it's way better looking in person than it is in every picture, in every video that I've seen to date. But dimensionally speaking, the Mark 8 is the same size as the Mark 7. And, it, and in fact, the rear roof line actually slopes downward by about one inch compared to the Mark 7. So it actually has, I think, a sleeker, lower look, if you will. But uh, same room inside the car. It's not bigger. It hasn't grown. It's not a Tiguan. <laughs> People are like, oh man, it looks like a Tiguan. And it's like, promise you, it's not a Tiguan. <laughs> this GTI Rabbit edition here and this one in particular was a show car previous Volkswagen shows in like 2019 when it was covered in multicolor Rabbit decals it had turbo fan wheels on it return it to stock and now it's uh, a car that I get to drive as my daily which is pretty cool we had another GTI Rabbit edition that one took part in what I would say is like the pinnacle of my career so far with Volkswagen as far as like cool things I've gotten to do. Um, I traveled with a group including Jamie Orr to Werthersee in Austria in 2019 and for me like getting to go to the largest gathering of GTI and probably Volkswagen enthusiasts in the entire world is probably at, at the top of the list for a lot of enthusiasts, including myself. So we got to take over a GTI Rabbit Edition, also in Cornflower Blue. This one was DSG, so it was just perfect for uh, the drives in Germany we got to do on the Autobahn. I mean, that was, it's tough to top, right? Like, I've been into Volkswagens as long as I can remember. Um, my first VW was a 2000 Jetta, spoiled out the gate with a VR6, I know. I mean, I have mad love for the EA888 too, but VR holds a special place in my heart. I know it sounds corny, but like once I learned to drive a manual transmission on that Jetta, it just kind of connected me to the brand. So I was in a really bad wreck with that car. It pretty much saved my life. So that gave me like further ammunition to just love the brand. Fast forward to after college, my first job in the real world was working at a Volkswagen dealership in Atlanta, Georgia. Had a Corrado at one point, obviously VR6. Got my first R32 when I was still working in dealer land. I did that for about three years. I left the dealership. I went to work for Audi, uh, doing auto show uh, product specialist type work. And that's what was kind of my big break into getting into Volkswagen of America. I took the job, moved up here to Virginia, started out in Volkswagen Academy, which is our training department for all the dealership personnel. That was a super cool job because again, as you know, in my mid twenties at that point, I was able to travel all over the US, interact with dealers, customers, like just do what really makes my heart beat for Volkswagen as a product trainer, develop a lot of the training curriculum. I got to be there for launches of some really cool cars. Like, like when we launched the, the Passat out of Chattanooga, opening that plant, I got to give plant tours out of Chattanooga. That was one of the coolest things I've ever done. And then about four and a half years ago, I got the opportunity to join the product management team, which is where I am today, uh, managing all the golf models. So at one point when we were still building uh, Alltrack and Sportwagon, as well as eGolf, those were my responsibility as well. So RIP. <laughs> But no, yeah, I killed it. That huge misconception, right? Is that like one person, not me. And it's not one person that makes that decision just for the record. Four and a half years later in this current role with VW, and I'm about to hit my 16 year anniversary with Volkswagen as a whole. So that goes all the way back to when I started at the dealership. So that's a kind of long detailed history of how I've gotten to where I am. So um, R32, this is my third R32 that I've ever had. This one I've had for three plus years. I'm trying to keep them under 100,000 miles, but at the same time, I love to drive the car. 96,000 miles on the clock. Mod wise, I am really just trying to keep this R32 OEM plus and preserved. Um, I'm not into doing any sort of engine mods on this car. I'm not going to supercharge it. I'm not going to turbo it. 
um, as far as even like stage one or any sort of chip tune. Been there, done that on R32s in the past. I just want to keep this guy pristine. So I've got um, KW V2 coilovers on it. I've got Magnaflow exhaust, BBS CK wheels. Um, also got my original Aristos. Car's pretty stock. I mean, stock radio, interiors, cloth seats, very important. And I would rate the interior as something I'm really proud of. Um, I would rate it like a nine out of 10. I know we're all really proud of our personal cars, but it's a beautiful car. Well, the Cabrio is, I don't want to say running project because that car could be a daily. I got to say, like, the Cabrio is just another example of a slow car that's fun to drive fast or just cruise in, right? Like, that car is never going to be fast. Stock ABA engine, five-speed manual, nothing special done to that. Got SolarWorks coilovers and vintage BBS wheels that are period correct. I think that really just sets off the cabrio. That's really all you need to do if you're not gonna do anything else. Obviously a VR6 conversion is a dream, but that is way out of the budget right now. And I've heard that VR6 conversions in the Mark III and a half cabbies is a lot more difficult than the early Mark III's. So it might not be in this car's future, but um, again, like I just think that car is a cool example of just vintage VW at this point. I mean, almost 20 years old, 125,000 miles and just cool little car. You know, even though we've all been working from home here at Volkswagen for the better part of a year, behind the scenes, I'd say we're busier than ever. And from the arrivals of the all new GTI and Golf R to the new ID4 all electric SUV to the new Taos, the uh, smaller SUV. Um, there are many other new changes coming this year as well for other models. We just came out with the RT on facelift. And then there's a lot more coming in the future years. So even though we've been working from home and things are a little bit different, we don't have the shows and events that we used to, there's so much excitement and enthusiasm from within Volkswagen of America that I think we have a very exciting future ahead of us. And I am very much looking forward to it.